everybody that's here, Father, everything that you're doing in their life, Father. And we, in the name of Jesus, Father, if somebody's feeling down, Father, we declare, Father, that you lift us up, Lord. Somebody's feeling sick tonight, Father. We declare, Father, the enemy is defeated, Lord. We call, Father, sickness out of our bodies, Father, and we throw them back to hell where they came from. In Jesus' mighty name, Father. Father, we call to those relationships, Father, in our, in our homes, Father, to be restored. Father, we call, Father, to everything to be in place, Father. Bless our home, Father. Bless our youth, Father. Help us to be the person that you want us to be, Lord. The parents that you want us to be. The grandparents that you want us to be, Lord. It takes commitment, Lord. Help us, Father, to commit ourselves, Father. And not to walk in the flesh. Not to walk in by emotions, Lord. And, Father, every addiction, Father, is removed out of our bodies. And then we just want, Father, be addicted to you, Lord. Father, every addiction of cigarettes, Lord. Liquor, Lord. It's gone in Jesus' mighty name. We as a Christian, we shouldn't be doing those things, Father. We should just praise your holy name and walk in your will. Walk in your word, Lord. Help us, Lord. We need you in our midst, Father. Without you, we won't make it, Father. And we thank you, Father, that every time that we fall down, Father, we can rise up and keep walking forward. In the name of Jesus, Father. We don't want to play in church anymore, Lord. Father, we want to walk in your will, walk in your word, Lord, and your victory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we, we all say amen. And everything that, that we worship tonight, Father, to rise up before you, Lord, like a pleasant aroma, Lord, like a sacrifice, Father, before your throne, Father. And then you can open the heavens, Lord, the floodgates of heaven, and pour up your blessing, Father, that nobody can contain. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare, Father, in this year, this coming year, Father, we declare and decree, Father, in this church around us, in this community, Lord, in our families, and our children, and our generations to come, Father, they're going to be blessed. And this youth, Father, is going to rise up, Lord and take over in Jesus mighty name we all say amen come on say amen and mean it and mean it in Jesus name amen
from that past until now, Father. And to be, Father, blessed, Lord, and what you're going to do in the future for us, Lord. Help us to walk in your will, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Would you open the eyes of my heart, Lord? Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. To see you high and lift it up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Thank you. 
a hand to the Lord. He's here. He's here to meet your need. He's here to heal you. He's not going to just heal you about your, your uh, physical body. He's going to heal your emotions. We need to be healed. Our emotion ne needs to be healed. Amen. Uh, our, the way we think needs to be healed. Hallelujah. It, it needs to be in, in when accord with the word of God, the Bible. Amen. You know, I'm not, I'm a, apologize for my myself, but I'm not, I'm not apologize for the word of God, amen. Because the, it's power, of, you know, God for salvation, amen. For those who believe, amen. You know, we thank God for for uh, for you know everything that He's doing, and you know, I thank God for everything that He's doing in my life, in my family, in my kids. You know, maybe I don't see it. I don't see things that I wanted, I wanted to see, amen, but I know that if we keep driving, amen, we keep going, keep believing what we were talking this morning about all those testimonies that what God is doing in, in our life in the past and in, 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 in today's, and in, in, in God's going to do amazing things, believe, just believe, don't give up, amen, God wants you to tell you that he is with you. He is with you, and he don't, he don't, don't want you to give up in your life, amen, in your ministry. 
and, and, and your families and your kids. Amen. It's, it takes, it's a commitment. Amen. It's a commitment. Then don't, don't give up. Amen. And you know, we thank God for these uh, this, uh, services that God is putting together, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Jew services that we give in the space, you know, the time and take time for our, our, of our to our young uh, people, amen. So tonight we have a special service, and uh, before that, I want to make an announcement. Um, this uh, in New Year's Eve, this that's Wednesday, we're gonna have a a, a, a service that's gonna start at nine o'clock, okay? It was on the on the this morning's bulletins. It was gonna start it start at nine o'clock, and the worship, praise and worship is gonna start at nine o'clock, and from there we're gonna uh, go to the to the potluck. It's gonna be a, a light dinner. It's gonna be finger uh, food, so we're gonna have sandwiches and, and things like that, okay? And then from there we're gonna you know come back to uh, to the to the message, to hear the what God is doing, and what's gonna do in, in our lives. Amen. The word of God. Amen. So don't forget, uh, Wednesday night is going to be when we're going to usher the new year here in church. Amen. And I think it, it, it's a good thing that we're going to receive the new year here. Amen. In church. So everybody's welcome. And tell a friend, bring a friend. Amen. We're going to have a potluck. So it's going to be at 9 o'clock. Amen. So. We, everybody is welcome. So tonight we have a special service. Savannah is going to be singing all of creation. Amen. Let's give him a round of applause to uh, Savannah. Okay, I got a, a new thing. Jacob is going first. He's going to be singing back to you. I got nothing 
nothing left to lose well, Let me slip, slide, slide and, and watch our world collide But I will hit the ground running back to you Hit the ground running back to you I may slip, slide and watch our world collide but I will, yes I will, hit the ground running back to you. I hit the ground running back to you. I hit the ground crashing down, rolling down, but I rebound. I get back up and I'll be found, running, running back to you. I hit the ground crashing down. Rolling round, but I rebound I get back up and I'll be found Running, running back to you Running back to you Back to you, back to you, back to you Running back to you Itchy! Amen, hallelujah! Good job, Jacob. You know, that, that reminds me, you know, everything that you do, you know, you're running away from God. The only thing we're doing is running back to God. Amen. Now we have Savannah. So let's give her a round of applause. Let, let's encourage her. Once and for all Captivated But no longer bound by chains Left at an empty grave The sinner and the sacred resort Sing with me now Lift up your voice and lay your burden down And all of creation Sing with me now Fill up the heavens, let its glory resound Time has faded we see him face to face Every doubt erased Forever we will worship the King And all of creation Sing with me now Lift up your voice and lay your burden down and all of creation Sing with me now Fill up the heavens Let his glory resound The reason we breathe of his glory and for all he has done praise the father praise the son and the spirit in one and all of creation sing with me now lift up your voice and lay your burden down and all of creation Sing with me now Fill up the heavens Let his glory resound And all of creation Sing with me now Lift 
the voice and lay your burden down and all of creation sing with me now oh let his glory resound every knee will bow oh and every tongue praise the father praise the son and the spirit in one praise god hallelujah it's good to see this young kids you know doing things for the lord amen and yes don't give up don't be don't don't be afraid don't be embarrassed you guys doing a good job and you know dave and nikki you know it's good to see your family you know it, let them, you know, you grow in your family and the things of the Lord, amen. And when I see you guys, it inspire me, you know. And, I mean, it takes after, after you know, their moms and you know, mom and dad, amen. You know, when Dave sings, you know, you're uh, uh, inspired my life too, Dave. You know, just don't give up. You know, you are a good example for, you know, a lot of families out there, you know. And... Uh, we thank God for, you know, these amazing things, you know, guys doing and these little ones, amen. And we as a parents, we need to, you know, you know, when I see young young people out there, they, 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 they don't know the Lord, and they have, they have a father, and I'm not being critical because, you know, it, it, it goes down from generation to generation. If we don't teach our children about God, you know, their parents are going to be the same thing. They, they're not going to know about God, and, and they, they're not going to know about God. So it's for us as a parents, you know, you know, to teach our kids, you know, you know, the Lord's way. Amen. And uh, we, as a parent, we shouldn't, you know, as, you know hold that back from them. They need to know. Young people, children, they need to know about God. So when they grow up, they can make their own decisions if they're going to follow God or not. But it's, up to, it's up to us as a parents to let them know about God. And, and if, if they decide to keep going in, in the things of the Lord or, you know, fall back, it, that's, you know, it's going to be on them uh, and their decision, amen, when they grow older. But, you know, but we, the, the Bible says if we teach our, you know, our children since they were little, they're never going to, you know, fall apart from God, amen. So, we need to, as a parents, you know, do that. And I thank God for, um, for what God is doing in, in, in my family and in, 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 in this ministry and in what God called me to do. Amen. Uh, with these young people. And I appreciate you guys, you know, uh, let me do this, you know, teach our young uh, you know, kids about God. Amen. I appreciate you guys, you know, let me do that amen and and i mean we're trying to do the best we can you know this uh, christian praise center uh there's a place for young people amen we're okay. not gonna neglect young people we're gonna uh, give them uh, their time their space amen so if you know about you know others is bring bring them in and you know invite them to come you know we have a youth service on wednesdays night okay at seven o'clock so just come in okay and then uh, you are welcome. Amen. So now we're going to um, change the order of the service. We're going to um, collect the offering. And we're going to, um, Jacob and, and uh, Savannah, they're going to be collecting the offering. And remember, everything that the, you help us with, amen, God's going to double that for you. Amen. They're gonna, he's going to bless you. And then, you know, you guys um, know that. And, you know, if everything that that we collect here, so, you know, activities for the youth, amen, for, you know, things for the church, and we, uh, in the name of the, the Lord, in the name of our pastors, we thank you guys for everything that, that, that you help us, you know, doing this, amen, and this ministry, so everything, everything that you, you guys, you know, do, God's gonna bless you, God, you know, I, I, um, declare you know blessings and especially this year to come you know god will open the the floodgates of heaven and pour up the, you know those blessings you know in your life and your children's and your children's children's amen so we're gonna go ahead and collect the offering 
If you pray with me, Father, we thank you for everyone that's here tonight, Father. And we ask you a special blessing, Lord, upon their lives, their families, their homes, Lord. Every, everybody, everybody around them, everyone around them, family and friends, Lord. We ask you to bless their families, Lord, in every area of their lives, finances, you know, uh, healings, Lord. Father, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, and we all say amen. Go ahead, guys. So if, uh, like I was saying, you know, you know God called us. Uh, he, he don't call you too late. Amen. And we th I thank God because he called me, my wife and me, um, to raise this, this young lady on time. Amen. Uh, he was, he's never too late because he probably if I would have wait a little bit uh, longer, um, I don't know what could have happened. But God called us, you know, on time and, you know, God has helped us to raise this young lady and all your prayers, like Pastor was saying this morning, all your prayers and everything that, that you do, that you're doing, you know, being a good example for all these young people. Uh, believe me, everybody is, is looking at you and what you do. And and they're going to say, you know, I remember, uh, you know, all, you know, when I used to go to, um, to church when I was younger, I remember this, you know, people, they, you know, they were my mentors, you know, telling me, you know, don't do that, you know, you're going you're gonna to have these consequences, you know, and, and I remember that. But I, didn't, I didn't listen to them at that time, but I still remember. And, and, and it came through when I was, when I fall away from God. Amen. But, you know, I thank God because he brought me back. Like Jacob was singing, you know, back to you. Everything, everything, sometimes, you know, we run away from God, but what we're doing is running back to, to God. Amen. We're just going like a, like a circle by the end. God wins. Amen. If you if you have read the, the book, the Bible, the Word of God, at the end, God wins. Amen. And it's an honor, an honor for me to uh, to call Yvette uh, to the front. He's going to be bringing the, the Word of God tonight. And uh, like I said, it's an honor, an honor for me to call her my daughter. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. <laughs> um, as like my dad was saying, um, I, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I came to this church, when was it? I don't know. A long time ago, let's just say that. And um, as most of you know me, um, Robin has known this, that I came in here grumpy with an attitude and sat in that corner and just with my mom and I don't know since then I can honestly say because of your guys' prayers and because of my mom and my dad not giving up on me <laughs> it's really touched my life I can honestly say that prayer the things that you guys been praying for me especially when I go off to school and stuff it's it's been really it's it's touched my life, and I just want, want to thank you for all that and, to, and for continuing for praying for me. So Today, <laughs> before I get all teared up, <laughs> um, I'm going to be talking about God with us. Um, hold on. So I, in the beginning, when my dad asked me to to bring the word. I didn't really know what to talk about. Um, so I don't know. I just, for some reason, God just told me, you know, talk about me. You know, not in a, you know, like I'm, you know, like, but in a good way, like boast about him. And that's something that we need to do daily. We need to boast about him in a good, awesome way. And um, two events that really, that really stuck out to me was, first, I'm going to be talking about the birth of Jesus. And since we already celebrated Christmas, it seemed like appropriate. Um, in Matthew 1.18. 
Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. His mother Mary had been promised to Joseph in marriage. But before they were married, Mary realized she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph was an honorable man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the marriage agreement with her secretly. Joseph had this in mind when an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said to him, Joseph, descendant of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, known as he saves, because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet came true. The virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to do. He took Mary to his wife. He did not have marital, marital relations with her before she gave birth to a son. Joseph named him the child Jesus. So when I... When I was thinking of God with us, I kind of, it made me see that two events, one event was the birth of Jesus. God knew before that we needed something, and he gave us a gift known as Jesus. Since the day he was born, people were trying to kill him and outcast him, which was during this time, which was King Her Herod, 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 um, because the reason why they wanted to was because he had the power. Like, they knew he had the power. He knew that this baby was something special, and he was going to bring a future to the people in the future. And so since then, King Herod wanted to, of course, kill him, which is known in Matthew 2.13. After he had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel said to him, Get up, take the child and his mother to f and flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, because Herod tells to search for the child and kill him. So I've noticed that since the birth of Jesus, people did not like him since the very beginning. Because they, they were af not afraid of him, like, you know, but because of, what he brought to the table, what he was going to bring to the to his people in the future. The enemy knew that Jesus was a threat, and so he he was trying to bring Jesus down. But at the end, God had bigger things, and he was like, no. When I have a plan set, I'm going to make it through, and this is what I'm going to do. And that's what he did. That's why he brought Jesus in, because he knew that we needed something special in our hearts and something in order to live our lives daily which was Jesus. And God isn't somebody who's angry or who's, you know, well, I don't know. <laughs> but he's somebody who's humble, who's gentle. And we need to realize that because we sin daily, he, he, gives, us mer he gives us mercy. He's gentle and he's humble and he gives us his everlasting love. Um, I looked up humility and it says, is Humble is variously seen as the act or posture of lowering oneself in relations to others or conversely having a clear perspective and respect for one's place and context. And that's exactly what God did. He, Jesus knew what was going to happen towards the end. He knew that he was going to be nailed on the cross, but yet he, God sent his only son, his one and only son to be just to be with us, which is, you know, key words, he he became one of us, just one of us, a servant. He became human. He became somebody who worked daily, who was just, just a regular person. But inside, he, cre he had the power, and he knew that he was going to, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> he knew that he was going to fulfill that promise. God didn't just send his son to be born just to be like us, but for everyone to know what he represented, which was the light of the world, the faith, and the love that he, he has. In Philippians 2, 6, A 
although he was in the form of God and equal with God, he did not take advantage of this equality. Instead, he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, by becoming like other humans, by having a human appearance. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. This is why God has given him an exceptional exceptional honor the name honored above all other names so that at the name of jesus everyone in heaven on earth and in the world below will kneel and confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father so the key, when i was looking at this passage key, the key words that were actually were actually that popped up to me was that he made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man, he humbled himself. When no one knew why the Lord sent his only son to be just like us, but Jesus knew, he set his mind to it because of his promise from the beginning, which goes back to Matthew 1, 21. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, he saves because he will save his people from their sins. The virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So since the very beginning, he, sent, he brought his, Jesus, was born into this world just to be with us, to be like us, because he, he, he wanted to get to know you. He wanted to get to know the people back then. And he knew that he just wanted to be with you. Just like any other person, Jesus struggled. He was tempted. He was ridiculed, belittled as a person, but yet he knew what he needed and wanted to do. And none of that stuff mattered because at the end, he was like, take me down there and I'm going to give myself to them. So I have this devotional thing that my mom got me at the women's, um, I think it was the women's ministry thing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, I know something stuck out to me. I was reading it the other day. God with us. Yet who would be so brazen as to claim he or she comprehends the meaning of those words? Who can explain the, this miracle that transcends all other miracles? How does the infinite, omnipotent, self-existent one, co-equal with God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, join himself with our human nature? How does the uncreated creator of uncreated creator of the heavens and earth become a part of his very own creation? In Christmas, we celebrate the astonishing, phenomenal generosity and love of God, the marvel and mystery of God loving us so much that he chose to became, become one of us into the midst of the world's problems and pain. The invisible, invisible, and transcendent God came near in the touchable form of his only son, the external one, and stepped into time. Now, I don't, I don't know, I kind of wonder, like, God, okay, God can see the hands of time. He knew what was going to happen towards the end. And I imagine, okay, what happens if God told us, okay, I want you to do that? I think one of, probably one of, I, I for sure would be like, um, I you know, but the thing is, Jesus humbled himself. He humbled, keyword, humbled himself because he's that type of God. He's gentle. He's humble. He, he loves people no matter what we do. And the thing is, I don't understand why we can't comprehend what he gives us. He gives us everlasting life. He gives us love. And yet we still, we think, God, why aren't you with us? Why aren't you with us? But at the same time, he is. You got, we just need to see that. We need... When those times come when we're going through trials and tribulations, we need to see that even though those times are hard and we're thinking, God, why did you, why, why are you doing this? Why? Like, that may occur. We're questioning why, why, why. But the thing is, God isn't doing this because he hates you or he doesn't, he just wants to get, you know, revenge. He, he's not like that. He does this because he wants to give you strength because he knows that when you're going through these tough times that you're going to lean towards him and he's going to be like, okay, child. Let me wrap your ar my arms around you, and I'm going to hold you, and I'm going to push every little trial and tribulation away because I know how much you need me, and I know how much I need you. That's the type of God that he is. God is humble, 
and God is love. I kind of question, like, what's love, you know? <laughs> and before, um, before I, when I was kind of like, you know, in and out of the world, you know, and I was like, God, you know, I don't really know what love is, you know? And something just popped into my mind, like, I am love. I'm just like, you know, like, God is love. That's, he, that's what he is. He's love. God has never left our side when we have needed him. Through those times, he has been doing what we have been asking him to do, intervening in our lives and trying to change the circumstances that are around us. God is with us for one reason alone, because he's in love with us. Keyword is in love. He, not past tense, loved. He's in love, and he's continuing to love us from from the beginning we were born to the end when we go on with him. That love is everlasting, lasts forever, endless, timeless. Love that goes on forever that no one can ever even imagine. It's a maze like that. It never ends. God doesn't leave us or forsake, forsakes us wherever we go, wherever we're at. He leaves traces of himself, but during those times, we need to actually see those times. Like, even though we may be in the dark and we may be like, okay, God, where, like, what, what am I doing? Where, where, like, and we may think, oh, God, why aren't you talking to me? Why aren't you, you know, you know, why, why, do, why don't I feel you? The thing is, he's there next to you. You just don't realize that. During those quiet times, you need to be still, be quiet, go into your prayer closet or wherever you're at. Go into a secluded, quiet place and actually listen. Listen to him and open your ears and actually be like, okay, God, I'm here. I am still. Let me, let me feel you. Let, let me feel your arms around me. And the thing is, okay, God is like that. When you ask for something and you continue to seek him and seek him and seek him, he's going to be right there. It's just like when he's knocking on the door, he's, keep, he's knocking and knocking and knocking, but yet we're like, okay, like, where are you at, God? Where are you at? But the thing is, we need to open the door and actually come face to face with him. He's just right there. It's very simple. The thing is, we make it so difficult thinking that he's not with us, but the thing is, he's just right there. Just like it says, the more you seek him, the more you will find him. And in order to do that, we must pray, we must be in the word, we must be connected to him on a whole different level. We need to keep, like, even though he may know, like, what's going on in your life because he's watching over you, the thing is, he wants to stay connected with you. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to say, he wants you to say, you know, God, you know, this happened, you know. He's just like a best friend. Like, that's all he wants. He wants, you know, like, be like, oh, this person, you know, did this, you know, and I really would like your strength, you know, and helping me not to get angry or anything like that. God just wants to hear your voice. He just wants to know that even though you may not think he's there, he is there through those tough times and through those happy times because he loves us. He did the most biggest thing back in the day and is still doing in, in the present. And he's going to continue doing the most impossible thing in our eyes. We may think it may be impossible, but in God's eyes, nothing is impossible. And he's going to finish continuing doing those awesome things in our future if we just let him. In 2 Corinthians 8, 9. You know about the kindness of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was rich, yet for your sake he became poor in order to make you rich through his poverty. Poverty. Pro poverty. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I don't know who would do that for me. Maybe, um, I don't know, may, my best friend probably might not even do that for me. I don't, I don't think she would, you know, lay, you know, maybe she would, I don't know. But the thing is, God, God is God. He's good. He's, he's good. Like, I don't know about you guys, but God is good. Amen. And the thing is, we need to keep reminding ourselves he sent his only son to be born on that awesome night because he knew that we had an awesome future. That was the true beginning of life for us right there. And yet we keep forgetting, you know, 
you know, God, you know, I'm dragging a bit, just a little bit. But the thing is, you know, from the day Jesus was born, that was a new beginning of life. And we need to keep humbling ourselves and keep knowing that God, God brought himself down here with us, with us. Just because he wanted to give us life. Because he calls us our friend. He, be, he calls us his child, his child. And when he created you, he was thinking about, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to set his or her face like this. You know, she's going to be special. He's going to be special. And because he, that's the God, that, that's how he is. He doesn't just make somebody and go, oh, boop, there you go. You're done. No. He's always, he's with you from the beginning since you're in your mother's womb to all the way when you're going to go with him. In John 15, 127. This is a long one. <laughs> then Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father takes care of the vineyard. He removes every one of my branches that doesn't produce fruit. He also prunes every branch that does, not produ that does produce fruit to make it produce more fruit. You are already clean because of what I have told you. Live in me and I will live in you. A branch cannot produce any fruit by itself. It has to stay attached to the vine in the same way you cannot produce fruit unless you live in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who live in me while I live in them will produce a lot of fruit, but you can't produce anything without me. Whoever doesn't live in me is thrown away like a branch and dries up branches like this are gathered, thrown into a fire and burned. If you live in me, and what I say lives in you, then ask for anything you want, and it will be yours. You give glory to my Father when you produce a lot of fruit, and therefore show that you are my disciples. I have loved you the same way the Father has loved me, so live in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will live in my love. I have obeyed my Father's commandments, and in that way I live in his love. I have told you this so that you will be as joyful as I am, and your joy will be complete. Love each other as I have loved you. This is what I am commanding you to do. The greatest love you can show is to give your life for your friends. You are my friends if you obey my commandments. I don't call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. I have appointed you to go to produce fruit that will last and to ask the Father in my name to give you whatever you ask for. Love each other. This is what I'm commanding you to do. If the world hates you, realize that it hated me before it hated you. If you had anything in common with the world, the world would love you as one of its own. But you don't have anything in common with the world. I chose you from the world, and that's why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant isn't greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they did what I said, they will also do what you say. Indeed, they will do all this to you because you are committed to me, since they don't know the one who sent me. If I hadn't come and spoken to them, they wouldn't have any sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. The person who hates me also hates my father. If I hadn't done among them what no one else has done, they wouldn't have any sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. In this way, what is written in the scriptures has come true. They hate me for no reason. The helper whom I will send to you from the father will come. This helper, the spirit of truth will, who comes from the father will declare the truth about me. You will declare the truth, too, because you have been with me from the, from the beginning. So some of the key passages that really stuck out to me were the verses 1 through 9. I'm just read it over. Je then Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father takes care of the vineyard. He remo removes every one of my branches that doesn't produce fruit. He also prunes every branch that does produce fruit to make it produce more fruit. 
You are already clean because of what I have told you. Live in me, and I will live in you. A branch cannot produce any fruit by itself. It has to stay attached to the vine. In the, in the same way, you cannot produce fruit unless you live in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who live in me while I live in them will produce a lot of fruit. But you can't produce anything without me. Whoever doesn't live in me is thrown away like a branch and dries up. Branches like this are gathered, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you live in me and what I say lives in you, then ask for anything you want and it will be yours. You give glory to my Father when you produce a lot of fruit, and therefore show that you are my disciples. I have loved you the same way the Father has loved me, so live in my love. In verse 14 through 16, you are my friends if you obey my commandments. I don't call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I've called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I've heard from my Father. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. Keyword, that those that line you didn't choose me but I chose you so the way before you were born God chose you he knew who you're gonna be in the future he knew what you were gonna do he knew what purpose were you gonna be in this earth and he still wanted to be with you And towards the end, um, verse 27, you will declare the truth, too, because you have been with me from the beginning. So no matter what we may think, we may think that God's not with us, but it says right there, this is evidence, you guys, evidence, that you would declare the truth, too, because you have been with me. Keyword, from the beginning. So from the beginning, we were always with him. Even when before, like, Back in the day, in those eras, maybe where there's dinosaurs, I don't know. He was thinking about us way before, from the beginning. And he sees how we're, we're, what's going what's to happen in the end. He knows because he's created us, and he's with us no matter what. He did not, he didn't have to come down to, with us. He didn't have to be born. He didn't have to do any of that stuff, but yet he chose to because he wanted to be with you. He knew that he wanted to express his love in a shape of a precious baby that was going to bring beauty to this world. We craved, back in the day, we craved beauty. We, cra we craved light. And God said, you know, I'm going to bring a precious baby that's going to give you exactly that. And he sent Jesus. Because of how much he humbles himself, how much he loves us, and how much he wanted to be with us, that is where his sacrifice comes in. I'm going to talk about his, where Jesus sacrificed himself just to be with us, to give us life, to give us love, to give us the hope that we needed when we're going through those trials. So I looked up sacrifice, <laughs> um, and it's, this is what Wikipedia told me. Um, an act of slaughtering an animal or person or surrendering a possession, which was back in the day, sacrifice was something that if you sinned, you had to sacrifice an animal and appoint it to, is it the temple? The priest, in order for you to gain back favor, in order for you to be forgiven, forgiven of your sins. And in John 3.16, as we all know that verse, God loved the world this way. He gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. God sent his son in the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. So he didn't bring his you know, he got, Jesus wasn't born, and then he, he did all that stuff, and then crucified just because he wanted to condemn us. No, he did it because he wanted to free, for our sins to be forgiven, and that's exactly what he did. He was a sacrifice for us, even though he didn't have to do that. He, he could have just been on, on his, or he could have just wiped the world and created a different generation, and like, 
and have people follow his every command, you know, from the beginning. But no, he he made a promise saying, no, I'm not going to wipe these people away because I see potential. I see beauty in them. And I know they have a purpose because they're going to be doing things that I have commanded them to do. And that's exactly why he, he did. In Hebrews 9, 11, But Christ came as a chief priest of the, of the good things that are now here. Christ went through a better, more perfect tent that was not made by human hands and that is not part of this created world. He used his own blood, not the blood of goats and bulls, for the sacrifice. He went into the most holy place and offered this sacrifice once and for all to free us forever. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of cows sprinkled on unclean, People made their bodies holy and clean. The blood of Christ, who had no defect, does even more. Through the eternal spirit, he offered himself to God and cleansed our consciences consciences from the useless things we had done. Now we can serve the living God. Because Christ offered himself to God, he is, also, he is able to bring a new promise from God. Through his death, he paid the price to set people free from the sins they committed under the first promise. He did this so that those who are called can be guaranteed an inheritance that will last forever. So since the day he was born and the day that he was sacrificed, that was also a new beginning for us. He was there with us. He was there thinking about us when he was nailed, when he was battered, when, he w when they put the nail of th thorn, the, the crown of thorns on top of his head. In Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord's power been revealed? He grew up in his presence like a young tree, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that would make us look at him. He had nothing in his appearance that would make us desire him. He was despised and rejected by people. He was a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering. He was despised like one from whom people turned their faces, and we didn't consider him to be worth anything. He certainly has taken upon himself our suffering and carried our sorrows. But we thought that God had wounded him, but beat him and punished him. He was wounded for our rebellious acts, he was crushed for our sins. He was punished so that we could have peace and received healing from his wounds. We have all strayed like sheep. Each one of us has turned to go his own way. And the Lord has laid all our sins on him. He was abused and punished, but he didn't open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. He was like a sheep that is silent when its wool is cut off. He didn't open his mouth. He was arrested, taken away, and judged. Who would have thought that he would be removed from the world? He was killed because of people, my people's rebellion. He was placed in a tomb with the wicked. He was put there with the rich when he died. Although he had done nothing violent and had never spoken a lie, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him with suffering when the Lord has made his life a sacrifice for our wrongdoings. He will see his descendants for many days. The will of the Lord will succeed through him. He will see and be satisfied because of his suffering. My righteous servant will acquaint many people because of that of what he has learned through suffering. He will carry their sins as burden as a burden. So I will give him a share among the mighty, and he will divide the prize with the strong, because he poured out his life and death. And he was counted with sinners, he carried their sins of many, he intercedes for those who are rebellious. He gave his life because he wanted to be with us. And yet, you know, I, I admit I'm guilty. You know, I can't put my own time aside and give him my own because I'm selfish. That's how our flesh is. But the thing is, we need to deny our own flesh because that's exactly what he did. He denied his own flesh because he wanted to sa be sacrificed on the cross for us. Because he wanted to be with us, and yet we can't give five minutes, ten, a minute, just to be with him. That's all he wants. And I admit I'm guilty because 
you know, you know, sometimes school gets caught up in my own life, or sometimes I tend to worry and stress about things. But the thing is, God doesn't want you to stress or worry about things that are trivial in this life. They're only here for, they're not going to last forever. We're just travelers passing by, and yet we worry about little things. And God tells me, God tells you guys that do not worry. I'm with you. God just wants us to be with him because he's been through with us through thick and thin. His love is everlasting, and he gave his only life because he was thinking about you. He was thinking about the purpose that you would bring into this life, of what you would bring to your own family, what you would bring to your friends, what we, you would bring to your relatives. You are the hope in this world. You are the love that represent God. We just need to be with him. We need to be with him. God wants us to crave to be with him because he craves to be with you. He craves it. He needs it. He needs to be with you. He's just like, it's just like a marriage, <laughs> you know? And we're his child also, you know? We need to be with him. We just need to surrender everything to him, and he's got everything under control. Through the quiet, even though we may not think he's not there, he is. You know, I admit, like, my this year has been one of those years. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you, most of you can agree. Just like Moses said last Sunday, this is the year, a new beginning, the year of rest. And I can, I can actually, I can, I can actually admit that this is the year that this, this is what God's gonna bring. He's gonna bring rest to your guys' lives. He's gonna bring promises. He's gonna fulfill blessings into your life, double portion. He's going to answer prayers that you've been praying for two years, three years, a month, a week. And you're going to see miracles happen. You're going to see wonderful things in, in this year, upcoming year. Because, because in, the, in the beginning, a, a baby was born. And he was sacrificed when, because he wanted to give us a new beginning for our lives. Imagine that when God was being nailed on the cross, or before that, he was, he was being whipped. What do you think was running through his mind? It wasn't, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I hope, you know, the Cowboys win, or in the future, I don't know. It wasn't that. He was thinking about you. Just you, just imagine, just think, just one on, be one-on-one -on -one with him. Think. He, he was being whipped. He was thinking about you. You only. You only. And then those guards were throwing spit at him. They were putting the crown of thorns on him. And what was he thinking? He was thinking about you. And when he was nailed on the cross, he was thinking about you. Just you alone. You and you guys are precious to him. You guys are precious to him. We need to realize that you guys are precious to him. God didn't create you because he was bored. He created you because you had a purpose in this life. You bring the love that he represents. And we need to stop thinking that he's not with us. From the very beginning, he sent his baby to be with us. There's living proof. The baby was born, and when he grew up, he was nailed on the cross. That's, the, that's it just blows my mind because yet we, we think he's not with us, and yet we don't remember what he's done. We need to start remembering what he has done. From the very beginning, God sent his baby, a baby, his one and only son to be with us. And this event occurred. He knew what was going to happen in the future, and yet he still did because he was thinking about you. He wanted to be with you. He was brought down to this earth just like a regular person. And he wanted to be with you. Just be with you, just one-on-one. -on -one. And he made the ultimate sacrifice for our sins to be forgiven. And we need to keep reminding ourselves, God, you are with us. You are with us. You are with us. Through those trials, through those tribulations, through those happy times. Even when you're, like, when you're crying or when you're worried or when you're anxious, God feels those emotions because he, you're a part of him. 
and he is a part of you. And when you're feeling happy and excited because you got that bonus from work, he's cheering you on like, yeah, I got you. And yet we keep forgetting that those little simple things, we think, God, you're not with us. Yes, he is. We need to open our eyes, open them, and see that he's right there standing with us. He gives us the Bible to con- for him so we can know what's going on. He gives us prayer so we can be connected to him one-on-one. He gives us the Holy Spirit so we can make the right choices in life. That way we know we're following in God's path. He gives us tongues so we can speak, so we can be connected one-on-one with him also. He gives us so many things, and yet we're still, oh, God, where are you at? He gives us so many things. God's with us. And yet we still, it still goes over our head. This year is the year of a true beginning. And this is something that we need to keep reminding ourselves that that if Jesus never sent his baby boy to send me down here, we wouldn't have, you know, a new year. We wouldn't have it. But yet, he did the ultimate sacrifice because he was thinking about you. We are his branches. He's the one that helps us to continue us to grow. He's with us always. He knows how your day goes. He knows your financial circumstances. He knows your worries. He knows everything about you and what goes on in your life. He shares the same feelings and emotions that you you have because you are one with him. And the thing is, we need to start saying, God, stop, we need to stop saying, God, where are you? God is with us. We need to start seeking him more because that's when we do that, we know that he's going to, he's, he, we have that reassurance in our heart, but also in our mind that he is with us through everything. He gives us the Bible, he gives us prayer, he gives us speaking in tongues, the Holy Spirit. These are our resources. He gives us weapons in order to be connected with him. He wants us to stay connected with him spiritually. This is our time for us to be with him. We need to start doing our part because he's always been there. We need to start doing it more. We need to start putting our own part instead of him doing all the work because he's not, you know, he's not going to, You know, we're over here and he's over there. Of course, he's right here next to us. But the thing is, he wants us to go with him. He wants us to search for him because the more we seek him, the more you will find him. With his birth and sacrifice was the start of a new beginning for all of us. Now that we are entering a new year, a brand new season with him, it is time to live up to what God has called us to do. And when we do that with a good heart and love for him. He will never forsake us, for he is with us who can be against us. And we need to keep reminding ourselves daily that that through those hard times, he's there with us. He's helping us to mature. He help, he's helping us to grow. We may not understand what happens in life, but the thing is, we're not supposed to understand it. We're just supposed to understand him and have our understanding in him and not in our own understanding. He is with us through thick and thin. As we can all see, the, ba- the baby was born, Jesus, and he was crucified, and then he rose on the third day. Just because he wanted to be with us. And that's just something that we need to keep reminding ourselves through those hard times, even through those good times. We, may, we need to keep reminding ourselves of what he has done from the very beginning to the very end. And he's going to continue to do awesome works in your guys' life. And I don't know, I just feel like this year is going to be a good year for all of us. For all of us. And I know that God's going to bring a lot of blessings to you and your guys' family. You just got to have faith. And you got to remember God's love in our lives. And
I don't know about you, but I got blessed with this message. Is everybody doing okay? You guys uh, feel like going home? 